Hi there, I hope you enjoyed your break. How can we drive sustainable change without sustainability leaders, which are committing their life and professional career to ensuring that we can meet our objectives, deploy more renewable every year, and develop climate-proof policy frameworks? In the next session, our CEO, Valboga Hemetsberger, interviews two distinguished speakers, which are driving change in their everyday life. Solar Power Europe's president, Mr. Aristotelis Chantavas, and Mr. Kostas Krekas, Minister of Energy and Environment of Greece. Valboga, the floor is yours. Thank you, Aurelie, for the introduction. It is a real honor for us to having the Greek Minister of Environment and Energy at our Solar Power Summit today. Welcome, Minister Skrekas. It's really great that you're taking the time to be with us today. I, I uh, I'm very eager to learn what the Green Deal means for a sunny country like Greece. And I'm uh, looking forward to discussing with you some of the aspects of the, of the Green Deal. And I'm not alone. Uh, I'm here with our Solar Power Europe President and Head of EU of NL Green Power, Aristotelis Chantavas. Welcome also to you, Aristotelis. And uh, I would like to kickstart uh, the chat with you. Thanks once again for being with us. And I think, Telis, you have a very good first question to Minister Skrekas. No, thank you, Valburga. By, by my side, I would like to, to welcome uh, Minister Skrekas uh, as well to this uh, milestone annual event for the solar industry in Europe. I'm double happy as a Greek because uh, your participation today will give the opportunity to our industry to learn more about the significant progress made in Greece in the last years in renewables. Uh, my question would be about the European Green Deal. The European Green Deal is meant to accelerate uh, the energy transition in our continent. Governments uh, all over Europe have put forward their uh, national plans. What is the approach of the Greek government and uh, which are the main initiatives you have launched uh, or are planning to launch? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for the kind invitation. And uh, as you probably know, in Greece we have adapted uh, and currently implementing one of the most ambitious national energy and climate plans in Europe. Uh, let me say that uh, our Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis shares the European ambition and the common vision for Europe to become the first uh, carbon neutral continent by 2050. That is why he has strongly emphasized his commitment to climate change mitigation adapting ambitious policies and joining international initiatives. Let me uh, share with you that uh, our energy strategy consists uh, mainly of uh, an integrated set of nine pillars. First, uh, we are decarbonizing our energy mix at a faster pace, pace than any other European country. In fact, uh, all lignite power plants will be closed by 2023, 20, uh, apart from one which is which is going to uh, be converted into a gas uh, power plant uh, in 2025, according to uh, public uh, power corporations' uh, plans. Uh, second, uh, we are great in, in expanding our electricity network so as to enhance uh, reliability and flexibility of the system. Uh, almost 9 billion euro are going to be invested by 2030 for the modernization of our electricity grids and the interconnection of our islands with the mainland. Uh, third, uh, we unlock the potential, of course, of energy storage using both batteries and hydro pumping because uh, it is uh, not uh, uh, available to, to achieve the, the ambitions that, that we have in the national targets. Uh, if we don't, uh, if we won't be able to enhance the grid stabilization uh, in order to support large-scale renewable penetration. Uh, fourth, uh, we uh, introduced green PPAs, both for industrial and for uh, large energy consumer, uh, commercial consumers, in order to decarbonize their production, but also to minimize energy costs and uh, enjoy also long-term visibility on energy prices. Uh, we also implementing a huge innovation wave uh, since our uh, building stock, stock is quite aged. Uh, so uh, the energy upgrading of our buildings will save the atmosphere from tons of CO2 emissions and of course the household's budget from unnecessary uh, energy expenses. 
Uh, six, we uh, transform transportation in, in a sustainable direction. We have already developed a battle of measures to promote e-mobility with great results. Let me say that uh, within only a few months, 10% uh, of the newly registered cars are plug-in electric vehicles. Uh, of course, at the same time, we are working intensively to develop the necessary uh, charging uh, infrastructure. Uh, we also support state-of-the-art pilot projects in the field of hydrogen. We are preparing a strategy for the smooth transition of the coal regions uh, with a strong emphasis on sustainable economic activities that will finally lead to uh, job creation. Uh, viable jobs, uh, and uh, uh, last we perceive uh, as uh, it's uh, 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 obvious natural gas as the bridge fuel towards uh, decarbonization, and uh, a main key for uh, uh, energy security and stability. And thus, we are investing in gas networks and gas pipeline connection with the neighboring countries. Let me say that, um, uh, of course, all the previews are, are very important, but. Uh, uh, we strongly believe that uh, the key enabler of, of uh, the success of our energy strategy is our citizens. Uh, therefore, uh, we uh, have uh, developed dedicated policies and uh, we are committed to involve all regions from cities to remote areas, uh, from islands to, to call uh, areas in order to, uh, to, make, uh, uh, to make them uh, very friendly to, to, to this, uh, uh, to this uh, uh, strategy. Indeed, acceptance plays a, a major role. Thanks very much for giving us an overview of all the ambitions uh, Greece has. The COVID crisis obviously came just right after every government developed the plans, the national plans to deliver on the Green Deal. And it gives us a great opportunity, apart from all the negative impacts we see in our everyday life, it gives us a great opportunity to build back, back better. From a solar perspective, uh, you know, just to give you, and, and you know these, uh, these uh, facts, but uh, just to give you an, uh, a, a quick insight, rooftop solar creates more jobs uh, than per euro invested than any other energy technology. And when it comes to the really big solar plants, the utility scale solar plants, they provide uh, very cheap electricity outperforming the, the industrial and wholesale electricity prices. So very good news for citizens and for businesses in Europe. So all of that carbon free, obviously. How will Greece channel the recovery funds into the solar sector to promote a sustainable recovery from, uh, from the current pandemic? Well, uh, in general, the investments we tend uh, to, to mobilize uh, by 2030, according to the strategy that uh, I described you, uh, exceed 44 billion euro. Uh, especially over the next five years, we are going to invest more than 5 billion euro in 21 green actions by the European Recovery and Resilience uh, Fund. Uh, now, the proposals for the RRF include the uh, inter alia the upgrading of electricity transmission and distribution grids, the development of storage systems, uh, storage systems and the interconnection of the allies, as I already told you. All these actions are essential also for the higher penetration of the renewables and will also facilitate the further development of roof photovoltaic installations. In fact, we will shortly announce a set of incentives to promote rooftop uh, solar installations, both in the interconnected and the, in the non-interconnected areas, uh, utilizing funds coming from the RRF, but also from the Just Transition Fund. Mm -hmm. Very good, good. very interesting uh, evolution. Um, uh, I have also one question uh, by my side uh, on renewables, uh, specifically related to the permitting process. Uh, as uh, we all know, uh, all around Europe, uh, for most countries, uh, permitting is a major bottleneck. But uh, in Greece, uh, it seems that we have uh, already simplified uh, part of this process uh, since last year. Uh, there have been uh, significant initiatives uh, to simplify and accelerate the process in permitting. Uh, however, uh, these uh, modifications uh, resulted uh, in a large number of projects under uh, development, mainly solar projects, uh, which uh, by far exceed 
the 2013 National Energy and Climate Plan uh, targets. Uh, how are you planning uh, to, to take initiatives to tackle this issue? Well, uh, actually, I think that uh, this huge in interest uh, expressed by new source investors uh, reflects the, the great investment environment of Greece, as well as uh, the effectiveness of the reforms and the policies we have implemented uh, according to our national plan. On the other hand, uh, the booming development of this uh, sector is something that we follow very closely, to be honest. And nevertheless, uh, we are planning uh, to introduce some measures in the near future to make sure that all this interest shown by potential investors is credible uh, on one hand and will quickly lead to actual, to actual investments on the other hand. Uh, let me say that overall our objective is uh, to speed up the entire process so as to be completed within uh, two to three years according to the European uh, targets. And that is uh, why uh, during the next four weeks we will announce the second phase of the simplification uh, process. Minister Skrekas, you already touched upon it in your introduction that uh, storage is very important for uh, for Greece and you mentioned batteries and hydro pump storage. So I would like to, to zoom in a little bit more on that storage topic. We need storage that's uh, without any doubt uh, in order to support the heavy electrification we are looking at, the need for electrification. Uh, that is also confirmed in the 2050 study we have conducted last year, where the, the need for batteries in particular will be massive. So I would be interested going a little bit more into detail on what the concrete plans are of Greece for a regulatory framework, potentially also for storage, and how you are planning to roll out storage massively as we need it going forward. Well, indeed, uh, electric electricity storage systems are essential to support uh, high renewable sources uh, penetration rates. And uh, in Greece, in order to fulfill our national targets, uh, according to our national uh, plan, uh, we need to, to establish uh, a storage system of uh, a capacity of around 1.2 to 1.5 gigawatt uh, by 2030. So we are very well aware of this necessity and that is why uh, from the moment I took office I announced that we would have a legal framework and a supportive scheme sent to European authorities for approval by the end of June. Uh, we have already set up uh, a team which uh, works uh, very intensively and uh, within May we will have a first draft of the framework and uh, we have a schedule that uh, within June we will publish it for public consultation. Uh, it is, uh, I think, also worth mentioning that uh, we have allocated 450 million euro uh, coming from the RF uh, to support uh, exactly the, the, the development of such energy solar systems, both batteries and uh, hydro Thank you. Very, very, very uh, sorry, Valburga, I jumped no, in. Go ahead, Alex, over to you. No, I think it's uh, very interesting what we hear about uh, your initiatives. Uh, one part, of course, in renewables is uh, generation. Uh, another important part is uh, the off-taking. And uh, you also touched this point in your introduction. Uh, the bilateral renewable energy contracts, the PPAs, uh, which uh, usually is uh, related to bringing together corporate sellers and buyers of uh, renewable uh, electricity. Uh, play an important role in the energy transition uh, all around the globe and in Europe uh, lately. They can increase significantly uh, European uh, corporations and businesses' uh, competitiveness by reducing the, electric, the electricity costs. Is Greece planning to take any measures uh, improving the framework of our uh, PPAs to flourish and uh, support uh, this energy transition? Well, a very important question <laughs> needs uh, an accurate answer. Uh, to be honest, uh, we have set an internal target regarding green PPAs, as we call them. Uh, that means uh, public procurement agreements between, uh, uh, between 
energy producers, green energy producers and energy uh, consumers. Uh, and that uh, internal target uh, is to have the first uh, PPA, green PPA, structured by the end of this year. Uh, but uh, to be more pragmatic, uh, our aim is that within 2022, uh, we will have at least 20% of the demand of the energy intensive industry being satisfied, being covered by green PPA schemes. Now, the reason, of course, it is obvious uh, to our point of view. First of all, greening their production offers extra value added to their products. Uh, also, competitive prices, energy prices, and uh, also long-term visibility regarding uh, rates. Uh, therefore, let me say that in our revised uh, national plan for energy and climate, following the latest uh, developments uh, of uh, European targets and uh, uh, the respective legislation, it will be clearly defined the percentage of renewables that will be allocated to be used through PPA schemes or through net metering uh, provisions to support manufacturing sector, the manufacturing sector and the Horeca industry in Greece. And uh, we also uh, let me say that we wish to link uh, green PPAs to our policies for energy poverty so as to extend uh, benefits to uh, vulnerable uh, citizens and uh, households. Uh, so we plan to submit a detailed proposal to EU authorities uh, by the end of June, covering uh, the PPA uh, environment. Well, unfortunately, we're already coming to the end of our uh, little chat. There's one last question I would like to ask you. You mentioned that you will be investing the very impressive sum of 9 billion euros by 2030 into electricity grids uh, as, as really the backbone of the energy system. I would be interested uh, as a last insight to learn a little bit more what exactly you are targeting uh, where is this money going into? Well, as I explained uh, earlier, the, the modernization of our transmission and distribution uh, electricity network is, is one of, uh, of the main pillars of, uh, of our energy strategy. Uh, and uh, indeed, uh, the, the, the expected amount of investments for the upgrading of, of our electricity grids, uh, the highlights and the connections and the smart meters installations, which is also very important here in Greece, uh, is estimated to, to reach uh, 9 billion euro by, by 2030. Uh, why? Because the reliability, the flexibility, the resilience of our energy system is a prerequisite, a prerequisite, a prerequisite for the fulfillment, fulfillment of uh, our national uh, program. Uh, it is always important to keep in mind, of course, that the cost of these investments will ultimately uh, be covered by consumers. Therefore, uh, we plan everything very carefully and in a balanced way uh, to find the most cost-effective uh, solutions. Uh, in addition, we utilize uh, the RRF and the Just Transition Fund uh, and the coherent funds, of course, because we want to finance the capex so that less capital will be recovered finally by the final energy consumers. And all this because we have always to take under serious consideration that uh, all uh, competitive, uh, of course, uh, green uh, competitive green energy prices is a key element uh, for the competitiveness of Europe itself as well. Thank you, Minister Skrekas. It was a real pleasure getting more insights from you. Uh, in this little discussion and I'm sure that uh, the audience behind their screens were uh, enjoying it as much as we did. Thanks for taking the time. I wish you all the best for all your ambitious plans and we are very much looking forward also following uh, what, what Greece is doing and uh, yeah thank you very much again for being with us today. Thank you, thank you for the invitation. Thank you for joining us today, it's our uh, honor. Over to you again, Aurelie. Thank you so much to our president and to Minister Skrekas for this very insightful interview. 
Before jumping to the next session, where I can tell you more about solar powering your food and how this is actually supporting the transformation and modernization of Europe's agricultural sector, I invite you to take another short break. We will catch up at 11.35, so see you in a bit. <laughs>